I'm 28 years old, and I have an older sister, Olivia, who's 31. Honestly, she hasn't really got her life together, but for some reason, our parents treat her like she's the golden child. Ever since we were kids, Olivia has had this idea in her head that I'm out to steal her thunder or something. Because of that, she's pretty much dedicated her life to one-upping me in everything. Let me break it down for you. It's not just the typical brother-sister rivalry where you might argue over who gets the last piece of cake or something. This goes way deeper. If I decided to learn something new and cool, like archery, the next thing I know, Olivia is strutting around school with her own bow and arrows, telling everyone she's into archery too. And it didn't stop at hobbies. If I ever mentioned in my diary that I liked a guy, bam, she'd be all over him the very next day, flirting like there was no tomorrow. And it wasn't just about boys and hobbies. Even when I decided to eat healthier and exercise more, Olivia would suddenly become all about the healthy life as well, copying my diet and workout routine to a T. It was like whatever I did, she had to do it too, but not in a fun, let's stare interests kind of way. It was more like I've got to do everything you do and be in all your friend groups. So yeah, if I made a new friend, you could bet Olivia would be right there trying to become their best friend too. Here's the thing, Olivia had this habit of copying me to the point where it felt like she was always trying to be better than me at everything I did. This whole copycat game started to really bug me because it felt like I couldn't have anything that was just mine. I tried talking to my parents about how much this bothered me, but they didn't get it. They would just say stuff like, Oh, sisters copy each other all the time, it's normal, and they made it seem like I was being silly for wanting to keep some of my interests just to myself. But the real problem wasn't about copying, it was about how I felt like I couldn't have my own space to enjoy the things I liked without Olivia turning it into some sort of competition. It wasn't fun for me. I didn't want to be in a constant battle over who could do something better. I just wanted to chill and do my thing. But Olivia always had to make everything into this big deal where she had to act to me. To make things even more annoying, it seemed like my parents were always cheering for Olivia, even when I was the one who really cared about whatever we were doing. They would never miss any event or thing Olivia was part of, even if it meant taking time off work. But when it was my turn, suddenly their schedules were too packed and my stuff didn't seem to matter as much to them. It felt like they were always making a bigger fuss over her achievements and kind of just brushing mine aside. All right, let me tell you how Olivia enjoyed being the center of attention all the time. She used every chance she got to rub it in my face how much our parents seemed to favor her over me. She'd whisper mean things to me when we were near our parents, and if I showed any sign of getting upset, she'd act all innocent, pretending she didn't know why I was bothered. But when we were alone, she'd be even meaner, telling me I should just disappear because nobody would even notice I was gone. Olivia would also tell me to stop being sad about always being in second place to her in everything. But her mean behavior didn't stop with just words. She actually bullied me physically at school a bunch of times. She'd do things like trip me on purpose where everyone could see or hit me, then say it was just a dare from her friends. When my teachers noticed what was happening, they called in my parents to talk about it. They were so serious they even mentioned suspending me. My parents would tell the school that this was just sibling stuff and they'd deal with it at home. But at home, Olivia would twist the story, making it seem like from the beginning it seemed like I was the troublemaker and Olivia's reactions were a result of my actions. Olivia had a talent for turning everything upside down, especially when it involved me. Our parents, bless their hearts, seemed to have blenders on whenever Olivia was involved. Even when she did something outrageously mean, they turned a blind eye. If ever they came close to questioning her actions, Olivia could turn on the waterworks like nobody's business. She'd sob and claim that I was fabricating tales out of sheer jealousy. Unfortunately, this defense worked every single time. My friends, who were true troopers through all of this, began calling Olivia out on her nasty behavior towards me. 
This seemed to be the cue for Olivia to kick things up a notch. She started concocting elaborate stories, complete with self-inflicted bruises or strategically placed bandages. Olivia then went around telling everyone that these were the results of my supposed attacks on her. Trying to defend myself against Olivia's web of lies felt like trying to climb a mountain with no gear. She was relentless, weaving her tales to anyone who listened. Anyone I'd never spoken to, laughed with, or dared to develop a crush on, her aim was to make them see me through her twisted lens. The result? My high school experience was less about learning and growing, and more about surviving Olivia's campaign of terror. Just when I thought it couldn't get worse, it did. After Olivia finished high school and took a gap year due to low grades for college admission, I was ready to start my own college journey. Through hard work and maybe a sprinkle of luck, I landed enough scholarships to cover my tuition. I was proud, relieved even, but then the bombshell dropped. In a casual conversation, my parents let slip that they had been saving up for both our college funds. Since I didn't need my share, they decided to funnel everything, including the money earmarked for me, into Olivia's bottomless pit of needs. There was the harsh truth laid bare. My efforts to be independent and financially responsible had inadvertently given my parents the green light to use resources meant for me to further indulge Olivia. It was a revelation that stung more than I care to admit, a stark reminder of the imbalance that had colored our sibling rivalry and my parents' favoritism from the start. When my parents laid out the red carpet for Olivia, telling her she could pick any major she fancied, it felt like a slap in the face. But the real kicker came when I discovered that my parents were planning to allocate all the college savings, including the stash intended for me, to Olivia. I was furious. I tried reasoning with them, suggesting that we keep my college fund separate for potential future needs like starting a business or even for my wedding. However, the conversation didn't go as planned. They hit me with the it's our money and we'll spend it how we like speech, insisting that Olivia needed it more than I did. Despite my attempts to argue, they weren't receptive and told me it was time to learn to fend for myself. That night, I cried myself to sleep, feeling like no matter what I did, Olivia would always be the golden child, and I would remain a mere family footnote. As college move-in day approached, I packed up my life, making sure I took everything to avoid any reason to return home. Predictably, my parents didn't lift a finger to help me move. Their absence had become more expected than shocking by then. During those low moments, feeling like I was on my own, I crossed paths with Adam at one of the college's welcome events. He was like a ray of sunshine piercing through the clouds of my gloomy world. His kindness and easygoing smile were genuinely uplifting. Meeting Adam felt like turning a new leaf, leaving behind the stifling air of my family drama for something, or rather someone, incredibly uplifting. As time went on, Adam became an amazing friend, always there for me like a rock. He listened without making me feel bad, providing comfort when everything felt overwhelming. Around Christmas, when my parents were hosting a big party and wanted me to come home, the idea of dealing with the drama alone was unappealing. So, I decided to bring Adam along, thinking it would be the perfect time for my family to meet him. I informed my folks in advance, letting them know that Adam and I would stay in our own space, but join everyone for the big dinner. When we showed up, I could tell my parents were taken aback to see Adam. Their old school views led to snap judgments based on appearances, but I was prepared. I had filled Adam in on my family, and he charmed everyone with his usual charisma, even catching my mom off guard with a bouquet of flowers. That night, Adam became the star of the show, dropping clever jokes and being his awesome self. He won everyone over with his friendliness, making a sweet speech thanking my parents for letting him join our family gathering. It was cool to see my cousins jokingly ask if he had any brothers, and I was genuinely glad to witness everyone taking to my boyfriend so well. However, I couldn't help but notice Olivia looking extremely annoyed, brewing in her own anger. As the evening progressed, Olivia started drinking excessively and whispered things to some of our relatives. 
It was evident that she wasn't happy about Adam being there and seemed to be plotting something. Right in the middle of dinner, she blurted out loudly, asking me if Adam and I were serious. The sudden question made everyone stop and look at us. Without hesitation, I grabbed Adam's hand and affirmed that we were serious about our relationship. Adam, looking slightly embarrassed but not upset, smiled and confirmed our commitment. But Olivia wasn't done. She followed up by asking Adam if he had any other siblings or if he was an only child. I could sense where she was heading with this, trying to undermine Adam's worth or dig up something she could use. Adam, ever so patient, politely responded that he was indeed an only child. Olivia's smirk grew more pronounced. My mom, sensing the escalating tension, tried to diffuse the situation by changing the subject. However, Olivia was relentless. She started recounting a made-up story about how I supposedly messed up in a group project back in high school, painting me in a negative light. Adam, bless him, interrupted her gently and defended me, pointing out how people grow and change over time, and it's unfair to judge someone based on their past. Olivia, now visibly irritated, stood up abruptly, spilling her drink in the process. She muttered something under her breath and stormed out of the dining room. The atmosphere became awkward, and my parents apologized on her behalf, trying to downplay the incident, but Adam and I knew better. We wrapped up the evening, thanked everyone for their hospitality, and left soon after. Later that night, back at my place, I apologized to Adam for Olivia's behavior. He brushed it off, assuring me that he didn't take any of it to heart, and was happy to have been there for me. His support and understanding in that moment made me realize how lucky I was to have him by my side. Since then, I've kept my distance from Olivia and focused on building a life filled with positivity and genuine relationships. Sometimes you need to let go of toxic people, even if they're family, to find your peace and happiness. Since then, I've kept my distance from Olivia and focused on building a life filled with positivity and genuine relationships. Sometimes you need to let go of toxic people, even if they're family, to find your peace and happiness. Adam and I grew closer as we navigated our college years together. He was my rock, always there to support me and encourage me to pursue my dreams. With his help, I managed to excel in my studies and even secured an internship at a prestigious firm during my junior year. This was a huge milestone for me, and having Adam by my side made it even more special. Meanwhile, Olivia's life continued on its chaotic path. She changed her major multiple times, and despite all the financial support from our parents, she struggled to find her footing. Every time she hit a roadblock, our parents would swoop in to rescue her, reinforcing the cycle of dependency and entitlement. It was hard to watch, but I reminded myself that her journey was her own, and I needed to focus on mine. After graduation, I landed a job at a top company in my field, and Adam and I decided to move in together. It felt like the start of a new chapter, filled with possibilities and hope. We decorated our apartment, blending our tastes and making it a cozy sanctuary. It was a place where we could escape the world's pressures and just be ourselves. As we settled into our new life, I found myself reflecting on my relationship with my parents. While their favoritism towards Olivia had hurt me deeply, I realized that holding on to resentment would only weigh me down. So, I made an effort to rebuild bridges, albeit with clear boundaries. I visited them occasionally, making sure to keep the interactions positive and light. One day, out of the blue, Olivia called me. Her voice was different, softer, almost apologetic. She admitted that she had been struggling and felt lost. For the first time, she opened up about feeling pressure to live up to the expectations our parents had set for her and how it had driven her to act out in harmful ways. She apologized for how she had treated me over the years and asked if we could start over. It wasn't easy to let go of the past, but I could hear the sincerity in her voice. I decided to give her a chance, cautiously optimistic that she might have genuinely changed. We began meeting for coffee occasionally, talking about our lives and slowly rebuilding our relationship. 
It was a delicate process, and there were times when old habits resurfaced, but I was determined to approach it with patience and compassion. Over time, Olivia started to find her path. She sought therapy to work through her issues and began volunteering, discovering a passion for helping others. Seeing her growth was heartening, and it reminded me that people could change if they truly wanted to. As for Adam and me, our relationship continued to flourish. We supported each other through the ups and downs, always finding strength in our partnership. One sunny afternoon, while we were picnicking in our favorite park, Adam proposed. His heartfelt words and the love in his eyes made me realize how far we had come together. I said yes, and we began planning our future as husband and wife. Our wedding was a beautiful, intimate affair, surrounded by close friends and family. Even Olivia, who had become a better version of herself, was there, genuinely happy for us. It felt like a new beginning, not just for Adam and me, but for my relationship with Olivia and my parents as well. Life is a journey filled with twists and turns, but with love, understanding, and forgiveness, we can find our way. I'm grateful for where I am today and look forward to the future with hope and excitement. As Adam and I settled into married life, we found joy in the simple moments, cooking dinner together, taking long walks, and planning our next adventures. We talked about our dreams, both big and small, and how we could support each other in achieving them. Our bond grew stronger with each passing day. Meanwhile, my relationship with Olivia continued to improve. We weren't best friends, but we were sisters again. She respected my boundaries and I appreciated her efforts to change. It was a slow process, but the foundation we were building was solid. My parents, noticing the positive changes in Olivia and our renewed connection, seemed more relaxed and happy. One weekend, Adam and I decided to host a family barbecue at our home. It was a beautiful sunny day, and as our parents and Olivia arrived, there was a sense of warmth and unity that I hadn't felt in years. We laughed, shared stories, and enjoyed each other's company. It felt like the family I had always hoped for. As the sun began to set and the evening cooled, Olivia and I found ourselves alone on the porch, watching the sky turn shades of pink and orange. She turned to me, a serious look in her eyes. Thank you for giving me another chance, she said quietly. I know I don't deserve it, but I'm grateful. I smiled, squeezing her hand. Everyone deserves a chance to change, Olivia. I'm proud of how far you've come. She nodded, tears glistening in her eyes. I still have a long way to go, but I'm trying. I want to be a better sister and a better person. In that moment, I realized how much we both had grown. Life had thrown us many challenges, but we were finding our way through them together. As the years passed, our family grew in love and understanding. Adam and I eventually welcomed two beautiful children into our lives, a boy and a girl. They brought so much joy and chaos into our home, and I cherished every moment. Olivia became an incredible aunt, doting on them and forming her own special bond with each of them. Watching her interact with my children filled my heart with happiness. My career flourished, and I found a balance between work and family that allowed me to be present for the important moments. Adam continued to be my steadfast partner, supporting me in every endeavor and sharing in the responsibilities of parenthood. One day, as we celebrated another family gathering, my mother pulled me aside. She looked at me with a mixture of pride and regret. I'm sorry for the way we treated you and Olivia, she said, her voice trembling. We made mistakes, and I see that now, but I'm so proud of the woman you've become. Her words brought tears to my eyes, and I hugged her tightly. Thank you, Mom. It means a lot to hear that. In the end, forgiveness and love had transformed our family. We weren't perfect, but we had learned to accept and support each other, flaws and all. Olivia had found her path, my parents had grown in their understanding, and Adam and I had built a life filled with love and happiness. As I looked around at my family, I realized that the journey had been worth it. The struggles, the heartache, and the pain had all led us to this moment of peace and contentment. Life would always have its challenges, 
but together, we could face anything. And so, with a heart full of gratitude and hope, I embraced the future, knowing that the best was yet to come. Years passed, and our family continued to thrive. Our children grew older, each developing their own unique personalities and talents. Adam and I marveled at how quickly time seemed to fly, cherishing every milestone and moment. One summer, we decided to take a family trip to a cabin by a lake, a serene place where we could disconnect from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. It was a chance to reconnect with each other and create lasting memories. Olivia joined us, excited to spend quality time with her niece and nephew. The days were filled with laughter, swimming, and exploring the surrounding woods. At night, we gathered around the campfire, roasting marshmallows and sharing stories. The simplicity of these moments reminded me of the importance of family and the joy that comes from being together. One evening, as the sun set and painted the sky with hues of orange and pink, Adam and I sat on the dock, our feet dangling in the cool water. The kids were playing nearby, their laughter echoing across the lake. Olivia sat on the shore, watching them with a smile. It's perfect here, Adam said, squeezing my hand. I love seeing the kids so happy. I nodded, feeling a deep sense of contentment. Me too. These are the moments we'll remember forever. As we sat in comfortable silence, I thought about the journey that had brought us here. The ups and downs, the struggles and triumphs, had all shaped us into the family we were today. I felt a profound gratitude for the love and resilience that had carried us through. Later that night, after the kids had fallen asleep, Olivia and I took a walk along the shore. The moon cast a gentle glow on the water and the sound of crickets filled the air. I'm really glad we did this, Olivia said, breaking the silence. It's nice to get away and just be with family. I smiled, feeling a warmth in my heart. It is. I love seeing you with the kids. They adore you. She looked down, a hint of sadness in her eyes. I sometimes wonder if I'll ever have a family of my own. I stopped and turned to her, placing a hand on her shoulder. You will, Olivia. You're an amazing person, and you'll find someone who sees that. And until then, you have us. We're your family. She smiled, tears brimming in her eyes. Thank you. That means a lot. As we continued our walk, I felt a deep sense of connection and understanding with my sister. We had come a long way, and I was proud of the progress we had made. Our bond was stronger than ever, forged through years of effort, forgiveness, and love. When we returned to the cabin, Adam was waiting for us on the porch, a content smile on his face. Everything okay? He asked, looking between Olivia and me. I nodded, taking his hand. Everything's perfect. As the years went by, our family continued to grow and evolve. Olivia eventually met someone special, and watching her fall in love and build her own family was a joy. Our parents, now retired, enjoyed spending time with their grandchildren and embraced the happiness that surrounded them. Life wasn't always easy, but we faced each challenge with a united front. Adam and I supported each other through thick and thin, our love growing deeper with each passing year. Our children flourished, bringing us pride and joy as they pursued their dreams. One day, as I sat on the porch of our home, watching the sunset, I reflected on the journey that had brought us here. The trials and tribulations, the moments of doubt and fear, had all led to a life filled with love, happiness, and fulfillment. I knew that no matter what the future held, we would face it together as a family. And that was the greatest gift of all. In the end, it wasn't the destination that mattered, but the journey and the people who walked it with us. And as I looked at the faces of my loved ones, I knew that I was exactly where I was meant to be. The moral of the story is that the love and support of family are what truly matter in life. Through ups and downs, sticking together and cherishing each other make the journey meaningful and fulfilling. In the end, I learned that sometimes, even family can betray your trust. It's important to stand up for yourself and set boundaries, 
even if it's difficult. I found strength in my relationship with Adam and realized that true family is about love and support, not just blood relations. Moving forward, I'm focusing on my happiness and building a life free from toxic influences. Thank you for reading my story.